you know why you live where you live? Don't answer us. It's going to look weird, you talking to the TV. We can't hear you, so we can't even answer you. Mm. But we can tell you what we figured out so far. Trains took us from the East Coast out West and put us in cities. Skyscrapers took us from the bottom floor up to the penthouse and crowded even more people into those cities. Then we ran out to the suburb. That's right, Rand. Now here's a crazy stat. From 1950 to 1990, American cities and their surrounding areas more than doubled in population. Here's an even crazier stat. In that same time period, the space those cities took up quintupled. We were spreading all over the place. Like herpes at the porn awards. <laughs> And it was all thanks to invention number four. The ShamWow. Nope, the automobile. Invention number four, the automobile. Today, there are more registered automobiles in America than there are drivers. And thanks to our cars, more than half of all Americans now live in suburbs. Whoa, look at all these amazing cars. Look at all this amazing tinsel. To see how cars moved us out of the cities and into the burbs, we got to get behind the wheel of some of these buttes. Our chauffeur, Brian Grams. And look, he's got a ShamWow. Randy, that's a regular towel. Whose family owns the Volo Auto Museum. We're looking at why we live, where we live, how our cities spread out, and what were the inventions that made it possible. Invention number four, the automobile. Brian, where do we start? Well, not here. We're going to go off to my high school. Your high school? That seems weird. Trust me. You got to trust a guy with this much tinsel. <laughs> yep. Follow me. Does All it ever right. feel like too much tinsel? No. Mm. All right, a lot of memories here, Brian. Your high school parking lot. Yeah, I got lots of trouble in this parking lot. Oh, yeah? Got busted by the principal for drag racing out of here. They did a donut right here in front of an officer that was hidden around the corner. When you did the donut and you saw the cop, did you drop a Danish? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right, well. We're, we're talking about speed. Where are the cars? Tom, go ahead and bring it in. First up, a Model T. We clocked this baby at 21 miles an hour, our fastest invention yet. Ford cranked out 15 million Model Ts by the late 1920s. And as a result, even those sky-high cities started doing, spreading sir? out. Hey. Fast forward to the 1950s, when suburbs were booming. Now, we clocked this car at 42 miles an hour. 42? Wow. 42. That's two times faster than the Model T. And look at this thing. It's badass. Brian, come on, knuckles. Boom. Dude. Awesome. What is this car? This is the 57 Chevy. It's the American icon of the 1950s. And how fast can this go? Not sure top speed, but it will do over 100 mile an hour. I look at this car and I say, I understand why cities expanded, why people started living further and further from the city centers. Thank you very much. Well, well, there's one more thing. One more thing that helped expand our cities? There is. Are you talking about invention number five? We are. What is it? Invention number five. I've wow. arranged a little race around town and back to here. Between what? This Between and that? The Chevy and the Model T. No contest. You think not. Now, Jason might have beaten me out of the womb by five minutes, not bitter, but I've got this race in the back. Get ready to eat some dust, suckers. Listen to that baby fur. But I can't hear you. Like a cat. We're it up. Like a feral cat. There is no way he is going to find out what Invention 5 is before me. Three, two, one, go! Go! Brian's plan is to have Jason and his jalopy take one route while we take another. I can already taste the victory. Wait a minute, is that exhaust? No, it's victory! Yeah! We dusted him. How fast we going, Brian? About 50. It's 10 mile an hour, faster than the Model T could do on its best day. You know what I love about this ride, Tom? I can feel my teeth chattering in my head. It's like riding in a giant vibrator, Tom. This is the original machine. Let's be honest. All right, so what's invention number five, by the way? You gonna tell me? I'm not gonna tell you. I'll just yeah. let you find out for yourself. Find out for myself? Correct me if I'm wrong here, but are we going on the highway, Tom? Yeah. You sneaky devil. You took the highway. That was your trick up your sleeve. Yeah. The highway with no stoplights, just straight on through driving. So highways are invention number five. Correct. I love it. Invention number five, the highway. When did highways become such a big deal in America? In 1956. 
What happened in 56? Eisenhower signed the Highway Act. It added 47,000 miles of new roads. 47,000 miles of new roads? That could change the face of a nation. A lot of stop and go in this town. There is. Yeah, that's OK. We got time. Wait a minute. Oh, look who's coming. <laughs> are you kidding me? How in the world? Holy cow, are you kidding? What took you so long? No way. How did this happen? I'll tell you what happened. We beat you by taking a little thing we like to call invention number five. The highway. The highway. Why didn't we take the highway? I'll tell you why, Rand, because you have a very special man on your team. He was willing to make his team lose in order to teach us the lesson. Yeah, he took one for the team. It's a good guy, Brian. And I get it now. I totally understand how cities could expand because of cars like these. Invention number four, the cars expanded the cities. Then invention number five, the highway just pushed them out even further. All right, you know what we got to do, Rand? Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. Really yeah.